Over the last 10 years or so, we've had dramatic increase in the knowledge uh, we have about autism. The field is poised to, I think, really sort of take off. What our study did was it was following infants at risk for developing autism. And we followed them starting at six months of age, uh, up until two years of age where we can confirm whether they've been diagnosed with autism or not. And we do uh, MRIs at six, 12, 24 months. What we found was an early brain abnormality starting at six months of age. And that brain abnormality was an excessive amount of cerebral spinal fluid surrounding the brain and that excessive amount of cerebral spinal fluid actually helped predict which kids were going to go on to develop autism by about like a 70 percent accuracy. This is a very novel finding. Uh, most of the research that's been done in the past sort of looks at the brain tissue itself, but this is a study about the fluid that surrounds the brain. It gives us um, some ideas about targets for therapeutics uh, that might um, help a, a subgroup of, of kids with autism. And it's particularly, a, I think, an important finding because this cerebral spinal fluid is easily detectable even with the naked eye on any standard MRI. You can see the CSF with your naked eye. You don't need um, sort of fancy software tools. You, you don't necessarily need to be a, a very highly trained neuroscientist to see it. The idea that these um, changes are present before autism unfolds gives us a completely different perspective on this condition. It allows us to consider uh, screening um, and uh, intervention before the onset of symptoms. So it gives us um, much more optimism about our ability to uh, ameliorate the effects of autism downstream.